Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like at o'clock, and we're like just a couple days before the NHL season starts. I'm Pearl of Wisdom. You're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Coming to you live from the Seattle apartment, I sent the Pearlocopter over to steal and brought him over. He's in the East Wing today. I'm in the West Wing. Uh, <laughs> Joe, Joe is afraid of flying, so we're not able to do that for him, unfortunately. But uh, he's there in his abode there in uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, in uh, Philadelphia. And uh, we are going to be doing the Central Division of the series, we, the, the infamous series of predictions for all the for all the land to hear <laughs> it's the new divisions are really tough really difficult this year aren't they to pick who's going to be in the top and who's going to be at the bottom this may be a little bit easier we're going to find out we're going to go from the bottom as in the least team that we like the one that will be the last and we'll go up to who we think is going to be the first and if you've watched the previous series and i know you have um, I don't know why you wouldn't have, but maybe for some reason you had the COVID or had a coma or something like that. Uh, but if you haven't, we you'll see that we have different view, differing views on these. It's pretty interesting. So let's get some pearls from Steel Flyers. You know Steel Flyers. Steel from SteelFlyers.com. You know, the infamous website that is amazing and growing and uh, going to be the best in the land. That one, that's Steel. Thanks for coming, Steel. Hey, man, thank you very much for having me. Always a blast to be on with two of the best in the business right here. If you guys are not following uh, Pearl of Wisdom and you're not following Professor Joe Boyk, then you guys are missing out. These guys are definitely the ones to be checking out because they are the pros in the news. So yeah. thank you very much for having me on, man. Can't wait to get into it. Hey, talking about pro, we got pro Joe. Professor Joe cut here. Call him Professor because... He knows lots. He's good with the thinkings. He's good with the thinkings. So, Pro Joe, out there, how's how's it in Philadelphia right now? After after, uh, is it? Do you have the whole big snow there a while ago? Is it gone now? Yeah, it hasn't snowed in a while now. That's the first storm we had in a bit, actually. Uh, so it was a new thing for our area for the last couple of years. We haven't had that big of one, but everybody dealt with it all right. It was nothing like climates where they don't expect the snow and everybody freaks out. We still expect it here. We just haven't got it recently. Cool. All right. I'm in Edmonton where there's snow, like there always is at this time of year. But anyways, let's get into our the Central Division standings predictions for this shortened 56. Uh, this is going to make it tough, too, with the shortened season and all that. I'm going to go with Projo here. Let, let what your bottom team for the central sir uh my bottom team just because they're still uh trying to obviously stack on draft picks would probably be the detroit red wings because i love what stevie y and blast show are doing down there to bring in veterans obviously like bobby ryan bringing in the uh scrappy players like the gagne you had luke lindenning there for years you brought philpula back darren helm so you have these guys that have been around the league to really help bring your young next future core into the league and make them comfortable um, in the league and show them like the ropes. I like what they're doing down there. They did the same on defense, bringing in a guy like a stall, obviously for the final year of his deal, but I, they're still on the last place team. In my opinion, they'll just be a f more fun, uncompetitive team this year because of the veterans they now brought in to go with their youngsters. There'll be that like, probably 10 games under 500 or more team, but that's fun, That's more scrappy, competitive, where you actually say, oh, the Red Wings haven't played well and lost a lot of games this year, but they've lost a lot of close games. I think that might be the progression you kind of see more from this team just because of the guys they brought in, at least until they start trading some of those veterans uh, to get one-year trade assets as they're accustomed to do. So I would say they're still be in last place, but because of the additions of Grice with Bernier, there'll be a scrappier team until they start probably trading some guys away for assets. Awesome. Okay, yeah. Uh, what you say, uh, Steele? Sorry about that. Peyton on the radio, or finest in the land just texted me got me all off i'm not good with my thinkings so like i can't multitask 
very well. <laughs> Steele, what do you think of the last place team? I, I like your I, I like your call there, Joe. Um, but I'm gonna go and for that reason I actually have them a little higher. I have the Chicago Blackhawks as being at the bottom. Uh, the they, the organization basically came right out and said they were being in a rebuild. They traded away their best goaltender in Leonard. You know what I mean? They, they, they. It was basically a fire sale for them this off season. You know what I mean? So, I think Detroit's going to be a little bit better. So I have Chicago down at the bottom um, because of those reasons. Uh, I think they're going to try to be putting together uh, some more draft picks there. They're going to try to do some things. But with this shortened season, a shortened camp, and, you know, uh, the sprint to the end, eh, I just don't think it's going to bode well for Chicago. Uh, if it wouldn't have been for the extension of the playoffs last year, they would not have made it. And I think they definitely took a step back from last year. Uh, because of their goaltending now being in question uh, and, and things of that nature. So I put Chicago at the bottom. Yeah, still, um, just to carry on, I won't say much more because I agree with what you, a lot you said, but I have Chicago on the bottom as well. Uh, their goaltending is just not good enough. Subban as your number one, I mean, after they lost Crawford, and Craw to Crawford, Congratulations on a wonderful career. He did retire from New yeah. Jersey. He tried to go over there and uh, ended up deciding that it was best for him to be with his family for whatever reasons. Awesome career for you, my friend. You, If you don't go in the Hall of Fame, I will be very angry. Uh, I think he's one of the most underrated goaltenders that there have been. And losing him in Chicago, I just agree with you, Steele. I think the energy that comes from losing guys like Saad, and Crawford, the heart and soul guys. And then you've got Taves comes out and he shows his displeasure with not knowing that they were doing this rebuild. Um, and now Taves is going to be hurt to start the season. Uh, not going to be. And, of course, Kirby Doc breaks his arm and yeah. World Juniors. I mean, this lineup is a travesty now. Uh, and uh, He wanders out. And, yeah, and then... Delia and Subban and goal. I mean, you can't say much more than we're rebuilding there than any. <laughs> so every everybody knows your rebuild name. Um, we'll get into the, your next one, Joe, and I'll talk probably a little bit more about Detroit later. So, Joe, what's your next pick on uh, number seven in this division? Uh, seven for me would be the Black. Hawks were actually a team when Ryan and I did the video they were going to be a fun team to watch just because of Corey Crawford always talked about how much he liked and then Delia said the same thing after Crawford retired how much he told him as an undrafted guy he kind of just liked some of his game and was trying to help mentor Colin a little bit so Hearing that from Corey makes me have a little bit more confidence in him at least becoming an NHL backup. I don't know if he's going to become a proven starter in the league, but that you, the fact that you got a little bit of a stamp from someone like him makes me think you've become something. It just depends what is that going to get to. But they don't have their other guys healthy. If everybody was healthy, then maybe uh, if Colin DeLear surprised and pulled a Francois or something – things could have happened in Chicago could have surprised people without Jonathan Taze, without Kirby doc, without Nylander there, there's no chance that that happening. Uh, Andrew Shaw, uh, bless his soul. Good for him. Congratulations to him is supposed to be back. Uh, from what I've read where they've said, Bowman said how great, uh, he's feeling, uh, he's in his best of spirit and, uh, it's great to see him be able to come back and see how Colleton, um, kind of, implements him into their system there but I think uh he'll do well he's a great town favorite so it'll be nice for them to have him back but again this will just be a scrappy team with all their injuries that will have more opportunities for more youngsters to step up so it'll be fun to see who does but they're probably finished seven uh now especially because of the injuries that have hampered them even further that's why i think they will definitely finish seventh but an outside thing to look into that i read an article on would be Corey crawford loves chicago would he come back to coach 
Yeah, well, that's he, possible. That, that's something that I read an article about this morning. Would he become one of their goalie mentor coaches until he eventually maybe takes over being their goalie coach in the future? Maybe. That would yeah. be something to remain to be seen because if that happens, I would say they're in a better position because then Dalia and Subban have their guy that was already helping them there. Still. Yeah. So, but yeah. they're still not going to finish higher than seventh this year, but I just think they're better set for the future if Crawford does come back and becomes that Nabokov after career goaltender, like whisperer type guy. Okay, Steele, what do you got there, buddy? Seven. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I agree with what Joe said about Detroit, only I just flip-flopped. I have Detroit finishing ahead of Chicago because I think they're going to be a step, a little bit step better than Chicago because of the some of the moves that they've made and and they kind of got that patchwork roster there with some of the guys that they brought in so that they I think that they're going to be a little they're going to win a little bit more now and I think they're with Eiserman back there uh, they can do nothing but get better right and he is a proven commodity in being able to build teams look what he did with tampa bay okay now that's a perfect example of what he did and so i really think that although detroit's not going to be there this year um i think that they are gonna because they're building draft picks they had a lot of players that played at the world juniors this past year so they had a lot of prospects coming through so it it's nothing good but up for them but just not this year but i think they're going to be a little bit better than the blackhawks so i'm picking them to to finish ahead of the blackhawks yeah i i just think that lineup for lineup chicago i mean chicago's got more offensive weapons but i just that goaltending just I have to see it before I can and with Detroit you have Bernier with an improved roster. They have young guys that like Heronic and stuff like that that are that are gonna be one year older, have uh, Blashill's in putting the system into basically the same guys. And he's working this system. I think the system will play a little better this year. And um, bringing in uh, Grice to help Bernier, I think is just going to go a long way for Detroit, at least to get not last overall in this. Uh, and I just think the energy for Detroit is better. They know they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but there's an excitement with their young players and all that, where Chicago yeah. is just waking up to this idea that they're rebuilding. And that, you <laughs> with know, that, insult to injury, literally. Yeah, but, but, yeah, I, yeah, like, but I like Detroit's goalie combination better with yeah. Bryce than I do with Subban and the Blackhawks. For sure. No, the, okay. the Blackhawks have, just as an interest, two of their goalies are undrafted. Colin D'Elia and I think Kevin Lankinen's their other guy they have in camp. Both of them are undrafted. The only guy that's drafted is Malcolm Subban, who yeah. was second yeah. round? Yeah, I, oh, I thought he was a third round. I think okay. he might have been a third, but Second he, he, third just, but he yeah. hasn't looked good anywhere he's gone. That's not a good sign. And this is what, his like fourth team? Could there be any worse sign than you haven't looked good at all yet? <laughs> and this is his fourth team now or something, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyways, let's go to the next one, guys. We're, what's uh, number six are we at? Yeah, number six. We'll go. Right. Sorry. We'll keep on going, Joe around that way joe you go okay i'll go for number six uh number six this is for me uh six and five are the hardest two to kind of peg in this division the reason i've went with this team is they still got a lot of ifs and the biggest one is where does their big guy in net produced this year <laughs> um and that is the florida panthers uh yes. i think the pan the funny thing is any team i put five and six though i think has a chance to make the playoffs in this division so don't get mad yeah. man it's just hard to pick between the four to six um so but i think bob's gonna have to be bob he's not gonna be he can't be in between because yes they got ekblad yes they got keith yandel but Below that, they don't have the most what makes you jump out going, they have this great consistent defense. Like Anton Strollman's a nice veteran, and then bringing <laughs> in Nudavara was a nice addition to get rid of Matheson. Um, that was yep. a good guy to get rid of and bring yep. in. But you have a lot of guys that below Yandel and Ekblad are more at this point 
your four through sixes. You don't necessarily have that steady who's going to step up and be right behind those two. I have to see, is Strawman still that at this point of his career? Is Anu Tavara going to step up and become that now? So I need to see what, and they made a lot of new new guys came in, and we talked about that in our offseason or, or our team reports videos. How is that going to affect the team early on? So I got to see how their defense gelled, how Bob plays, and how a guy like uh, Hornquist, who obviously would do grow great from a leader perspective, but from an actual skill perspective, fits into their offense as well as the one-year addition of Anthony DeClaire. This team made a lot of late additions, a lot of early additions, so you're going to have to see how they gel into the offense when there's a Carter Verhege's another one, when there wasn't a lot of time to get used to the new team. That's why with these additions, if they gel, they probably could be fourth. But because it's so much movement and Bob had an off year his first year, I need to see a lot of ifs answered for them to move to fourth, and that's why I have them at six. Man, Steel, you know what do you got? A wise man once said that if you surround yourself with very, very intelligent people, that eventually that intelligence will rub off. So I'm going to say that I am completely and utterly with you on this with the Florida Panthers. And for exactly the same reasons, with the addition of Gudis as well, to the Florida Panthers, and then the subtraction of Mike Hoffman, who was their big of, biggest offensive threat. They didn't really replace that per se, but I mean, you can't really replace that, honestly. You know what I mean? And the fact that he took a tryout contract with St. Louis. I mean, okay. So, look, if, and the only reason why I'm doing this is because of Bob. If and it's like we said this about you know some of our team videos. If your goalie is a Vesna Trophy winning goalie, which Bob is, and if he plays up to that particular caliber, and it just so happens that Florida just so happens to have two of the best prospect goalies coming in with the gold medal gold medal winning uh, uh, in Spencer That's Knight, right. Yeah. right? And then the the second guy was uh, is Levi from Canada. Right, so they got some good goalie prospects that are going to probably push time for some from Bob, but if Bob plays up to his Vezina Trophy caliber and Quinville can wrangle all of those guys, see that's the other thing too. Whereas, exactly what you pointed out there, Pro Joe, when when you talk about all of the turnaround that that Florida has, like they came out and said, and they basically had a they had a you know a fire sale. Okay, everybody, see ya. Right. Well, gosh, well, you basically turn out the entire team and then all oh, suddenly now it's 56 games and now, you know, oh, it's only two week camp and no preseason. They might be better. I think they're going to be better than Detroit. I think they're going to be better than Chicago just because they have that goaltending. But eh. they also have the Huber Doe of the world. So they have that more skill. They have, especially with Chicago's injury, that extra skilled player than those two teams necessarily have. Yeah, Dylan Lark is great, but he doesn't I'm have pretty to con it. I'm pretty conflicted with this one, too. Um, one thing I did like about Florida was that they brought in uh, that uh, Zito, for one thing. I'm, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go off the board. I'm going to say Nashville here. I'm going to put Nashville <laughs> here. Yeah. Um, and there, I'll, I'll talk about Florida when I get to Florida. But the reason why I'm going to put Nashville here is um, – it's, it's not really what they did with their roster. Poyle has a way of being able to bring the players in. I am not a fan of their coach. I, I'm not a fan of Hines. I, I don't think he's the guy. I, I really didn't understand taking Hines in for, for Nashville. And I think the roster has gone kind of stale. To put it mild, to, to put it bluntly, I think it's kind of gone stale. And... Uh, the Johansson, Duchesne, uh, bringing Granlin back, I don't like. I think Luke Cunning, uh, Cunin, his defense isn't very, isn't good enough. I did like the Eric Halla signing, but the other big thing is they added a lot to their defense that I think will be better. I just think it's too much change for right now. Boriecki and Benning coming in, I think on paper look better than the previous defense. I just don't know if it's going to be enough for this year. And I'm not a fan of Juicy Soros as much as a lot of people are. 
So I'm going to put Nashville here, and I'll explain why I'm not going with Florida here, the next one. But, Joe, what's your five? Uh, you're a six. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, my five is uh, the Predators. I think uh, bringing in uh, Gr- bringing Gronlin back, which nobody thought they would be able to do, just figuring he would go somewhere else, does add a little bit more skill still into your lineup that knows your system. Um, but you, what, it's what you said. It's a lot of guys coming in uh, with the new season. You got a uh, Kaneen. Uh, you didn't mention our former flyer there. Nick Cousins also uh, came into town there as well. Um, so you got a lot of moving parts, and you also have to see. I think Duchesne got a little over criticized, my, but, but so I think he'll probably bounce back a bit. But Johansson has been playing well, but since he got, since both of these guys have got paid eight, they haven't played like eight million dollar players. They've just played all right or well. So you have to you're going to want both of those guys too to produce at the contract length they're getting, and not just play well. Like so, that's also what could get them to jump up one spot because all you have to do is jump up one spot to make the playoffs from where I have them. But it's just what you said, the questions of bringing in so much new people, bringing in a guy like Benning too, who's still developing pro- as a guy that the um, Oilers were able to get going in, in 24, 25 season, really. Now he's in his age 26 season, just going to get even better. So I think they're, probably next year if they make continuous moves i really like eric holla too and kind of finagle their team if say kunin has a good season whoever has a good season you hang on to guys that kind of tamper down you move on from next year i think is more the year for them and then they'll probably they'll be able to have extra money too from pekka uh moving on at that point than this year so i agree with you on that i think it's the moving parts but like i said uh, four through six is a crapshoot with this uh, central division. Gosh, man, yeah. I couldn't even agree with you more, dude. I mean, one thing about Nashville, though, is, boy, they have a lot of money available to spend. Their cap, they have a lot of cap space, like 20 some million dollars, right? It's sick, the amount of money they I thought have. they only had, se- like, $7 million in projected cap space. I don't know. I just checked it, and from what I saw, it said $22 million? No, that's probably next year. Yeah, it's probably for next year's. Are you next talking about year? or this yeah, year's? Yeah, uh, I've done that before. Dude. Yeah, next year, I, next year's cap space, right? For them, is going to be big, but they have to sign a lot of people. Yeah, they can re- they can change their whole lineup next year if they want to, and I think that's exactly. what, what Joe is saying. Right. Everybody, everybody's on the edge here. Prove it or lose it. Prove it or lose it, right? So yeah. that's kind of why yeah, exactly. I I I agreed with Joe. I put Nashville ahead of Florida just because I think there's more talent on the team all the way around. And they have Pekka Rene who, you know, I, but I'm also kind of on the same fence here with you too. I'm not a fan of Hines and the coach down there. I didn't, I didn't think that getting rid of La Violette in Nashville was going to really be the answer. I think it's more of what um, Joe said. It's kind of prove it or lose it kind of time for these players down there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so, I, but I think they have more talent because of their goaltending, and I just think they have a little bit more talent um, throughout their lineup. That's why I have Nashville uh, up there uh, at uh, the fifth position for me. Now, um, I have I have Florida here, and could be higher. I'm not sure. And the reason why was Zito coming from Columbus was huge. So. But Zito knows Bobrovsky. He knows how yeah. Bobrovsky ticks, all of those things like that. Also bringing in Nudavara and Wenberg, who worked in Tortorella's system, can also help play the players forward and uh, defense to say, this is what Bob Rosky, this is what Bob's used to. This is how, you know, it maybe can help the coach and stuff like that, and they can gel and have something that – it just seems to me like the best tonic for Bob Roski there. Not to mention Zito came out and said we have they started a team of goaltending expertise or something. They called it something like that. They brought in a whole bunch of goaltending coaches and called it like and created its own division and everything. So let me put it this way. If that doesn't work, see a Florida. <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye. You're yeah, gone. Right? 
you're, you're welcome to whatever the next city is, Quebec or whatever, because that's that's got to work. So I'm putting them there for that reason, and that's not really working um, because they, you know, they also brought in Hornquist, who's going to change the character of that lineup there. Yeah. That guy is a huge leader. They brought in leadership kind of guys, so I'm kind of going with that. But I'm with you guys. It would not surprise me if Nashville moves up or down here. So let's go quick here. Number four, Dal, or number four for uh, you, Joe. Uh, number four for me, uh, it is um, going to be, uh, I think, the this one was the hardest one for me. I think just because there's more question coming into this season with some of the guys they lost. Um, and have to bring in. I think they're still make the playoffs, but I believe Torch's group might drop down to the four spot because he had, and that's the reason they're going to make it over the Predators and Panthers is because of how much their coach and their system and the way that they're able to get the best out of everyone because they lost some guys that played, like you said, well in their system. And they're going to now have to have other guys come in and step up, have a guy like a Kukon or a Harrington play a much bigger role uh, on their defense and a Gabriel Carlson come in and actually have a much better immediate, like a more immediate impact with the way they did things now. So I have confidence they're going to make it and I could see them jumping up to three or two. It's just with the people that they lost and the fact that this team already isn't the most significant scoring team. If Domi can be that consistent now, great like 60 up point guy in an 82 game season then yeah I think they're probably consistently move up the mark but even with uh Domi there when you look at their team they're still not flooded in goal scoring you have Atkinson you have a guy like Domi Dubois offense like Peyton always says is going to get better but that's still three guys that are good like really consistent with it then you got everybody else so I feel like because of their overall team chip in effort unless if those three guys really are some of the best three trio in the league and then their defenders step up they'll probably be fourth but there'll be that fourth place team that nobody wants to play in the playoffs probably <laughs> that, that that's the fourth place team Columbus will be there'll be the team that everybody that pisses everybody off because of the way they play but they're yeah. they're, they're get there but i think they're just be fourth because of the adjustments they're making this year and domi right. coming in is a big addition you have to put in your top six and adjust to as well so okay steel okay so uh i like what you said about columbus but i'm gonna put dallas here okay i i think that the fact that hudobin not being able to get into the country is gonna hurt okay and, and not being able to start the season with them is gonna hurt OK, I think that's what's going to happen there. And and I think that the although they've had, you know, they've re-signed and, and everything and they brought people in. I think that the injuries and everything and with the, with the folks being out for them, I think is going to affect them at the beginning of the year. I'm not saying that they're going to be horrible. OK, by any stretch, because I think Joel Dean is going to be a pretty good goalie. It'll be able to step in there for Dallas at least. You know what I mean? But I, I just. I think Dallas is going to be there in the fourth spot. Um, I just have that feeling with them. I just have that feeling with them because I, I think that they're going to be missing their goalie at the start of the year, but I think their 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 backup goalie is going to step in and play enough so that they're go they're going to be okay. Um, but with why you said with the the Blue Jackets, that's why I have Blue Jackets playing from Fire Tablet. Yeah, that's just that thing being stupid again. I think, right. uh, yeah, I got okay. So I got, I got Dallas fourth as well, uh, and that's simply because Sagan's going to be out for the beginning of the year. Um, I, this is fourth. Yeah, I got Dallas fourth, and it's mostly because of injuries. Uh, I could see this going up and down as well. Uh, it's hard for me to put him fourth with such an incredible run in the playoffs, but. I think they just, they really took a kicking in those playoffs. All their guys were injured. You got a short time, then you got to get back on your horse. I could see this team fading down the stretch. I could see, or um, uh, um, if they don't get their goaltending situation back on board again, like with Hudobin, or if Hudobin falters, you got Ortmeier there. 
to uh, is a young guy. There's a lot of ifs here that could fall apart with them. So I'm taking them fourth. So third, Joe. Uh, yeah, I still put for me uh, Dallas at third because they just seem like that team that was able to persevere. Similarly to uh, usually they would be a Western Conference team. The blue, the blue Jackets of the Western Conference, they just found a way to win the game, especially when bonus came in compared to beforehand. Uh, they were able to just scrappy find ways to win games. I think they're do that early. Um, Podobin now with the first three games postponed has a much better chance of actually being able to start the season um, if he can get in and do what he has to do. I know uh, that's what the one CBS thing I read said. So if that's the case, maybe he could start on the 19th or he'll only be out for one or two games compared to what it would have been. But Ottinger or a Landon uh, Bow is their undrafted guy. Uh, they would probably be the two guys I would think um to get to get the nod at that point jake would obviously be starting uh so i think i have confidence enough in him to man the crease especially with the way that their defensive system plays there with the addition of um potentially like a ryan shea or somebody like that um that could come up this year there will be a guy there there will be a team excuse me that just plays continuously a great system and gets it done and they have obviously a great story for their locker room a guy that everybody loves down there at Stephen John's actually coming back this year so um that's a that's I'm pretty sure um it says that on but that's a um they just have a good defense and Sakara I love their pickup for Dallas when they picked him up but that's a prime example of what I told you guys before sometimes a defenseman just goes to a new team and for some reason it's like a relief pitcher in baseball when they're older in their career they're able to figure it out better with that new team Andre Sakara seemed to have found a second leg um with the Dallas Stars and I think his veteran presence with their young defenseman has really helped so I think they're going to continue to get uh, better and build on this year. And I think this is a great opportunity for Ottinger early on if Kodome is not able to go to showcase himself in the first couple of games. And I think he will do that. So that's why I still put them three. It's just the way they play. I think guys like Kivi Ranta, Dennis Gorianov will continue to do good. well. Rupe Hintz or Rupe, like I like to say, Hintz will continue to do well. I just think this team has the skill. Um, they the, to be able to replace it, and then they, of course, have great prospects like a Delandria and the Miners, who's not o too far away, and a Jason Robertson, who's a has a cup of coffee in the league already. So we'll see where they uh, go, but I still think <laughs> they'll be um, third, in my opinion, in the top three. There you go. So for me, my my third is your favorite team there. Uh, so I, I, you get to hear it. I'm picking Columbus Blue Jackets to be in the third position here uh, for this division. I really think that although they I, they brought in Max Domi, I think that's going to be a huge addition for them. Um, I, I, I really think that that's going to help them get over the hump. They were that feisty team that played Tampa Bay to the nth degree. And they just kind of ran out of gas. I also think with the addition of Savard is going to help them as well. Um, I, I, you just, you know, like I, I'm, I'm going with you on this one, Perlo. You can't ever count out the Blue Jackets because of Tortorella. Um, I think they've made some decent moves this year. Um, they haven't changed that terribly much. They did bring Domi and Savard, and some other couple players, but. I think that I just like them finishing third. I, I had a hard time as well between these guys and Dallas. So it was a flip-flop. I could either put Dallas here or or Columbus. So I went with um, Columbus as the third place for, for my pick in the Central. Yeah, I have them as third as well. And uh, it's they have players and Tortorella is coaching them, so they'll be third. I do. <laughs> I'm not gonna, on paper, there's no reason why they should be up here. They're as simple as that. No, I mean. They're not better on paper than Dallas. They're on. not better on paper than Was really like Nashville it. either. They'll, yeah. just, they'll just make it for reasons you said. So, number two, Joe. Uh, number two, I struggled with because I wanted to put uh, 
my man's teams at no at number one. Uh, but I just felt like I couldn't do it yet until I see them overtake the mantle. So I'll still go with the Canes at number two. Um, they do got uh, guys like Jake Bean right down there. Uh, Joey Keane's another defenseman. I know you like. I think you brought him up before uh, Pirlo, if I'm not mistaken. As uh, someone you've liked. Um, so they got good guys developing down there with Hayden Flurry, Gardner, uh, Pesce, obviously, is one of my favorite. Def- I was saying that last year where people thought I was stupid. When he went out, I was like, that's more of an impact than people think. Like, nah, I got a stack defense. What the hell are you talking about? So, but, but uh, yeah, he's a guy that's they're one of their anchors. He's been there from the basically the beginning along with uh, Jake up top. So, uh, he's a very important piece. Now that he's back fully healthy, that's going to get them rearing and going. And then Marty Nakis is just going to keep getting better and better, along with Andrei Sveshnikov, where now we renamed, like they said in the game when Zegras tried to do the uh, lacrosse goal, that's now called the Sveshnikov, apparently. Uh, so like that's how good a guy is at 20 years old already. This team's moving in the right direction, too overtake a top-notch team like Tampa I'm just putting them second because I want to I need to see their goal pending be able to uh stay there with their system or maybe they go out and get a guy on the market because they still obviously have uh the goal tending of uh Marazic and James Reimer still which is not an adjustment from their past goaltending, but they do have more defense coming up. So that could be what makes the adjustment to make them maybe be able to overtake the lightning, but I'm still going to put them second. Couldn't agree with you more there, Pro Joe. I struggled with this as well, too, because when when you look at Kucherov being out for uh, Tampa Bay, and but then you also put Stamkos in. Now, they, exactly. <laughs> they won without Stamkos in the playoffs, and for the most part, they won the Stanley Cup without Stamkos, but because they had Kucherov in. So how much of a hit is Kucherov going to be? I have Tampa Bay second because I think that that is going to affect them more so. And because exactly with what you said about Carolina, I really like what Carolina is doing with their team. And man, you can't ever count out Roddy Brodeur as the coach for that team. I agree. Uh, uh, Rod Brindamore, I'm sorry. You you can't, uh, you can't count out the fact that he is one of the best coaches, in my opinion. Rod Brindamore has those guys working down there, and he's got them going in the right direction. But I also do agree with you, though, that there's questions with Morozik. He's streaky and, and, and things of that nature. But I think that Tampa Bay is going to be missing Kucherov more so than what they were missing Stamkos, and I think that's going to affect them. So I got Tampa Bay at number two. Isn't now, that a great I, problem to have, though? Like I mean, you uh, okay, off, I and gave then you're away like, okay, my number we're, one, but, okay, you know. Yeah. Well, every, everybody, everybody knows their number one now. We'll probably just finish her up here because we know that you have. I am very close to you on this deal as well. I am. It's a coin flip to me because, like you said, I really think Brindamore is turning out to be every bit the coach as Tortorella and Barry Trotz. He's that. With that level of coach and that forward in defense, he, he what can he do with that goaltending? I think that he's already propped them up a lot, however. Morazic's numbers look good because Brindamore has done well with their system in his system at propping up his goaltending. Um I jeez. Uh, I'm gonna take Tampa second, Carolina first too. I think <laughs> Because the reason why I'm taking Carolina to win is the same reason why I'm always underestimating Tortorella. Always have been. And I just finally started realizing that you just can't always think greater than it's going to happen with a guy like Tortorella. And because of Brindamore, I'll say he does things greater than I could imagine with that Carolina team. And they get him in. And that's no slight against Cooper. I think Cooper Cooper's a great coach. But I think... There's guys that are just upper, upper level. And I think Brindamore is reaching that upper, upper level. And the reason why that we'll see Carolina be the first and uh, Tampa Bay be second in that. So you got Tampa first. 
I think it's going to be tight. I think it's going to be very close. I think it's going to be a fantastic division to watch. So, I even think Florida could be even a lot higher. I mean, all of these yeah. guys can be a lot higher. So, so we all have, wait a minute. So, uh, do, I'll see if I get this straight now. We all have Carolina, or no? Joe no. has Joe has Tampa, has, I put Joe has Tampa Bay second. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. Okay. See them yeah. with their goaltending overtake. I think what's going to maybe supplant their goaltending overtake is the fact that they got the Keens and the Bean uh, coming up. Uh, Keen Bean. Uh, coming up to uh, take over their defense. And I, I think they'll. Pick that actually up, sounds I, like a bean. I right. think they'll probably <laughs> pick up goaltending at the trade deadline too. Uh, it's very close, but well, boys and girls, that's our full forty-two. Now you have it. Now you know what's going to happen. You don't even have to watch this season. You already know it's going to win in the central. Well, no, please watch the season. <laughs> I know you will because you're going to you have to watch it to find out we're exactly right. Well, one of us is, anyways. That's anyways, that's our full 42. Go check us out on steelflyers.com. Tell him that is going to be amazing. You can find all of our stuff there. And thank you guys for coming and coming to this fine channel. That's my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Hey, you know what cool kids are doing? They're hitting the subscribe button and they're liking it. And I hope you do too. And I hope you guys have yeah, two-day countdown of the regular season. We're all ready. That's our full 42. Have a great day.